Welcome back there, boys and girls, for more the flipping class. And today we're going to talk about all the uh, special kinds of transport and finally involve the mosaic in the fluid mosaic, you know, all those proteins and whatnot that are stuffed in there that I said were so important. So let's, uh, goody, great, just below it. So let's talk about moving large and or polar molecules. So we talked about four, only small non polar molecules can move through the membrane. However, that would be free diffusion. Sometimes though, we need to move bigger things. When we do that, we use what's called a carrier protein. Very important word to know, carrier protein. Here's a good picture showing that happening. As you see, you have phospholipid bilayer embedded in it. <clears throat> carrier protein, and it just sort of acts like a channel just for the molecules just to flow through. Think of it like, like a doorway in a wall. We are not small enough to sneak in between the cracks in the cinder block walls of the school, so we have a carrier protein that uh, can open or close, and mostly it's just open, for us to move in and out. Henceforth, the doors shall now be called carrier proteins, so be prepared for that. So yeah, when we have carrier protein, just lets molecules move through. This is called facilitated diffusion because it's still diffusion, still no energy being required other than what was required to generate that protein initially. And once it's there, the molecules are still following their concentration gradient, moving from high concentration to low concentration. They just do it through a special channel called the carrier protein. It's helping, so it's facilitated diffusion. Here are some examples. Osmosis, we used to think because just the water could just seep through, but because it's polar, we know it can't. So it uses aquaporins as its specific carrier protein. So there, that's the reason why uh, plan A is always regular diffusion and plan B was osmosis, because just like it takes you guys a little longer to get through when there's just one door, as opposed to like, you know, there could be many doors, could be faster. So yeah, it takes a little bit longer because it has to go through that carrier protein mess. Uh, glucose, when it's transported inside and out of the cell, happens in the stomach, small intestine. Glucose, that big ring, it's also polar. It cannot move through the cell membrane, so it needs uh, that. There's also these ion-gated channels, which are controlled. They're like the doorways, where they can be open or closed based on if there's an ion in it or not. Those are important for uh, muscle function and other cell-to-cell -cell communication. Sometimes ATP is probably involved generating those ions. Also neurotransmitters, hormone intake in some but not all cases, all of the things that are happening in your body that make your body function. Almost all of those that are done purposefully are done via facilitated diffusion because just like each enzyme can only act on one specific type of uh, uh, chemical reactant, or each of these facilitated diffusion carrier proteins will act on a specific one. So we've got aquaporins for water to go through, we have a special gated channel for that, we have special channel for that, special channel for each hormone to go through as well. So these are purposeful decisions that the cell has made vis-a-vis -vis the programming as a nucleus to allow for these transports to occur. Here's a picture. As you can see, we're still moving from a high concentration to the area with a lower concentration. Some molecules are likely sometimes to flow backwards, but for the most part, it's more likely that the molecules here will be going up over into there. <clears throat> that takes care of some of these interior proteins, right? Those cell uh, facilitated diffusion, those carrier proteins. But let's talk about sometimes we may need to move things against the gradient. This is the way that these molecules are not going to flow on their own. And because they're not going to flow that way on their own, that'd be from low concentration to high concentration, by the way, we're going to be using a transport protein. Transport, because uh, today, children, we're talking about active transport. You have transport proteins, and those are going to be moving molecules against their gradient, and because it's active transport, it requires the use of ATP. Energy is involved to make this happen because we're moving molecules against their gradient. So you can imagine if here is the inside of the cell, here is the outside of the cell. If we have a higher concentration outside, those molecules will want to flow inside, but maybe it's something the cell doesn't want on the inside. So instead, we will use ATP and force them to go from the lower concentration towards the higher concentration, the way that they don't want to naturally go, and by want to naturally go, the way that they don't naturally randomly flow. That requires ATP and the use of a transport protein. And like I just said, it's called active transport. 
Here are some examples. You have ion pumps that are involved in muscle contraction. Those are important. That's the reason why using your muscles requires energy. Uh, uses uh, ATP synthesis, actually uses uh, ion pumps and active transport as well, the whole thing that the mitochondria does. Uh, chloride channels, which help you prevent having some kidney stones, which uh, those are pretty bad for you. Also, uh, getting salt in and out, processing of urine, reuptake of water from that urine, all of these are moving things against their gradient, and so those are all active transport requiring ATP. I gotta love the irony, though, of needing ATP to generate the transport that makes ATP. More on that uh, soon, next unit. Now you're probably wondering, yeah, it looks great, but these channels and these transport proteins only seem large enough to really move one to two molecules at a time. And you'd be right. What if we want to move really, really big things? Like how does, how does a white blood cell engulf an entire cell and take it into it? What if we want to move lots and lots of these little molecules? Or even lots and lots of relatively large molecules like starches or sugars or hormones or proteins? Well, your body has a trick for that too. These require a special type of active transport that you actually do really already know about. They use vesicles and large amounts of ATP. That's right, we're going to be talking about my good friend, the Golgi, the ER, the vesicles again. Remember, the vesicles are able to interact with all of these membranes because they're all made out of that same kind of phospholipid bilayer. So they can join, they can bleb off, they can join, they can bleb off. If things are moving into the cell, so you can see here we're moving these molecules are being moved into the cell. That's called endocytosis. Endo meaning inner, cyto meaning cell. Osis is a word for like action or a thing that you do. So inside the cell, a thing you do. Here's some molecules, the cell wants to use them in. So what it'll do, it'll pinch off part of the membrane, just it right down, start forming the vesicle. The vesicle will pinch off cell membrane fuses behind it. Now the vesicle moves along that cytoskeleton transport highway to wherever it was going inside the cell. Macrophages do the same process when they engulf bacteria. Opposite of that would be exocytosis or outward cell thing you do action. Here's the vesicle. This is what happens with a protein synthesis and trafficking that export of proteins when they come from the Golgi hole. So this could be a Golgi vesicle. Here it comes, it fuses, becomes part of the cell membrane, pinches a little hole and just pushes the molecules out into the space. So anytime we're moving large amounts of stuff or really, really big stuff out of the cell, that's exocytosis. Anytime we're moving large things into the cell, so that would be endocytosis. It uses Vesicle, vesicles. Here are some examples. Uh, neurotransmitters, I've got a little clip here that you could uh, clippy clippy. Hormone secretion, like stuff coming out of the pancreas, anytime your pancreas or your liver or even parts of your brain are releasing large amounts of hormones, they're gonna just be dumping them out from the Golgi, from those vesicles. Lots of parasite interactions use uh, endo and exocytosis. Macrophages, like I talked about, your generous white blood cells when they're eating bacteria, they're gonna use endocytosis to bring those things in. And that's actually called phagocytosis. Phago is a word for eating, devouring, uh, destroying, right? Eating cell action. And the cell eats a whole nother cell. It's phagocytosis. And so those are all the examples and types of special transport. Thank you for watching. Make sure you have your whisks ready for in class. And we'll talk about any of the questions or issues you